Today I am in the old Defender because <laughs> it's the only car available to me at the moment. So it was quite a bumpy ride down to um, Pilates this morning. But hallelujah, we finally found someone that can sort the tires out on my car. One of the issues was slash is where it's parked, which is literally right just there, um, because a tow truck or anything that could come and lift it can't get into this area. and my tires apparently are weirdly hard to change i don't know i don't understand cars um but i did get charlie to help me and we finally found someone that's going to be able to come into this car park later today and replace my tires hallelujah so usual start to the day um i've got cardio reformer pilates with alex which is one of my favorite classes because it's seriously high intensity lots of hit work on the floor um like mountain climbers side planks press ups push ups tricep dips alongside jump board work on the reformer so loads of core loads of legs and then you also have weights in your hands and you're doing arm movements as well so i absolutely love my hour of friday morning pilates with alex then i've got such a nice day planned today i'm meeting my lovely friend hazel gardner who you guys might remember from a couple of vlogs uh, we've done a floral wreath making class together during vlogmas i think or maybe just before vlogmas in the joe malone townhouse and also we did a really lovely day down at beaverbrook with william morris or morris and co fabric and we did a little floral workshop together but we've been trying to get a date in the diary for so long for hazel to come down and do a day in the cotswolds so we're going to meet for lunch at soho farmhouse and then um i think maybe we haven't really planned what we're going to do but perhaps we'll go along to the chippy flower farm which is five minutes from farmhouse see if they're growing anything see if we can pick up any blooms and if we can then maybe head back to the house create some nice little table displays because hazel is a floral designer she is incredibly talented at floral tablescapes floral bouquets structures and just the loveliest person in the whole world so i can't wait to spend a day with her so that's the plan um and then we've got a nice kind of family weekend planned so excited to bring you along with me but without further ado let's head inside for pilates darlings that was just the best start to the day saw lots of familiar faces in the club i was watching hugh richard's video on seeds to sow in february and i had to restart it about six times because i kept getting chatting to people but i did officially watch it and i now have a pretty thorough to-do list for gardening tasks for the weekend so i'm heading over to the farmhouse now to meet um hazel can't wait to have a girly day together but first i've got to try and start this car easier said than done um <laughs> it always takes me about five minutes to start it because the steering wheel always locks which basically means you can't turn the key ignition key in the ignition so um <laughs> let's give it a try oh okay that only happened because you guys were watching <laughs> that never normally happens so Hazel and I have had a glorious lunch and we're now investigating the kitchen garden. We're both very happy to see that they're doing a no dig. Do you do no dig, Hazel? I try and do no yeah, dig. Yeah, try and do no dig. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to explain it to us, what's actually going on here? This is Hazel, everybody. Hello. The best, the best. We had great chats and now she's going to talk to us about all things gardening and florals. What's the benefit of no dig? So basically, no good. Every time that you put anything in the earth, you're actually creating a lot of gases that come out of the earth. Um, so what you want to do is like, you don't want to keep digging it up and digging it up. Um, so that's where no dig comes in. So you see that you've got, uh, you've got like a cardboard layer here, which mm. is like biodegrade and then yep. they put the soil on top. And that, that, that cardboard will just like 
basically make sure that you have all the nutrients so you don't have to keep adding loads of peat or adding loads of like mm. soil conditioner and mm. you're just the earth is doing what it needs to do naturally without you interfering with it too much amazing um, so yeah that's it's so clever. i'm sure it's way more scientific than that <laughs> it's <laughs> also fine. from a lazy gardener's point of view the cardboard blocks out all the weeds exactly. so you don't have to literally break your back pulling yeah. all the weeds out and yeah. and it just means that you get almost like a fresh start and the worms are very happy exactly which is exactly. great so it's like super natural. and that's what we're trying to look for especially well what i try and do is sustainable gardening so you know sustainable supports and using wicker yes, and you know exactly. just trying to, we're going back we're going back to how things were done yeah a long time ago, i love it be, so. we'll have to come back in a few months when these are covered in sweet peas that would be gorgeous should we go and check out what they're growing in the greenhouse yeah, let's go on. let's go and see <laughs> afternoon I've shown Hazel the garden although you have to use your imagination really don't you <gasps> well I, I can see I can see like the bedrock of everything I can see yeah. all the structure and I can see everything poking through mm -hmm. so yeah I can't wait it's just gonna see but I think it's beautiful now oh, I really do yeah I that's really very do. kind tell us yeah. what you're growing this year Oh gosh, so we did a lot of um, like landscaping last year. Mm -hmm. So I've got like my garden studio now, the, well the studio for the flowers is in the garden. Heaven. And then there's like gravel and now there's, I keep um, inching into the garden, so taking out the lawn. Yeah, oh the lawn is yeah. boring, the lawn has <laughs> I just keep going like this and like my husband Andrew, I don't think he's quite noticed how much I've lopped off the lawn. That's so um, funny. Yeah, so and we put in a lot of... <laughs> We put in a lot of um, structures, we put in a lot of topiaries, a lot of the the, um, the prunes that you've also mm -hmm. got. So, so this year it's just more, I, it's probably, I've had that gone about six years now. Wow, okay. Yeah, six, seven years. So now it's just actually probably maintaining more than adding. There's only mm -hmm. so much I can add. Yeah. But, but I might take out, now this is scandalous. Oh gosh. So when I first <laughs> when I first designed the garden, I didn't know as much as gardening as I do now because okay. it's quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I just planted roses because okay. I love roses. So you take them out? Might do just because the varieties I planted they're not good for cutting. Right. Okay. So if I I have got a, a, a nice size garden for London, but it just mm -hmm. feels like such a shame to have a lot of space for a rose you can't cut. That's very true. Yeah. What would you put in that area? <sighs> I mean, I really love like grasses and more mm. wild and naturalistic, like all the other borders are quite like that yeah. with hydrangeas. So I probably just mimic what I've got going mm. on there. Beautiful. But, you got salvia? Um, yes, I got salvia. Good. You're so smelly. Yeah. That's good for any flower displays. I find it yes. forever. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's really good for underplanting roses, actually, salvia. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, really good, like shout. pairing. Okay. Um, or I don't know, I might put in a, I might move the rose, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've got somebody who like helps the garden and she was like just move the rose because yeah. they're not you're not meant to but I've moved one rose like four times really time. oh wow well yeah, a lot of the roses down stuff. there um they were in the original kitchen garden and they were put in there by the old owner's um wife who sadly passed away mm -hmm. and we were really upset to be changing the, the garden because we didn't want to dislodge her roses yeah but luckily they survived the move we we really cared for them when the ground was all upskittled and yeah. now they're really they're strong yeah. this is the thing I think people are so scared like oh, we can't move a rose but actually mm -hmm. they're really dexterous things. plants are dexterous yeah, um, dexterous. Plants are a lot more resilient, yes. I think, than people often give them credit yes, for. Yes, I agree. So, do you ever grow flowers from seed? Do you know what? I only started a couple of years ago, yeah. and it's terrible because seeds actually need a lot of love and attention. They do, and especially because the su the summers are so like warm. Uh, and sometimes I things are like very dry. I'm like oh, and then some, sometimes my seeds are rotted because mm -hmm. I'm away so much. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to try. Um, yeah, yeah. which is the, the greenhouse conversation. That we yes. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. The first so year we moved here, I was just obsessed with cosmos. I think yes. because they just grow oh, yeah, so, so well. well. And yeah. And come again. Yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. But, um, actually, I had quite a lot of success growing lupin from seed as well. Oh. And then you, when you grow from seed, obviously you can find such unusual varieties. Yeah. So I found ones that were like white in the middle and then purple on the edge of the pod thing. So, Ooh, beautiful. so beautiful. So I hope they come back this year. He wants to come to you. Oh my gosh, uh, oh. my brand new friend. Uh. Hazel and Dexy are officially <laughs> besties. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. Um, lupins, I've tried lupins, but the snails. 
How do you? How do you? Yeah, from that yeah I think it's definitely sometimes where you are in the country. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Have you tried eggshells? Tried everything. Tried eggshells. Tried copper. What else did I try? Coffee. Uh, yeah, literally wow. everything. Oh yeah. And last year I had no alliums because they were really? all eaten. Like at this stage of the year, all wow. eaten, all just eaten, oh or God. dug up by the squirrels or foxes. Something. Or your doggy, maybe. No, do you know what? No, doggy. Um, no. Doggy. Uh, <laughs> doggy. Uh, Ringo is so good, he never digs. Really? He, he goes to the toilet at the bottom of the gra gravel. That's he doesn't heavy. go on the lawn. So, yeah, no, I think it was a. I think something was very hungry and it kept eating my um, mulch oh, and, and oh, the manure. Maybe there was something. What did you Yeah, it was eating Settle. the manure um, and it just dug up all my. Oh, yeah, it was very sad. Oh, but they're that's coming back this year, so it just must be dry or something. But, yeah. So odd. It's so funny how year after year different things, different things. do so well. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Didn't have much luck with my pumpkins last year. Oh sadly. no! So it's be a good pumpkin year. Yeah, because normally they're quite good to, as a grower, aren't they? They're yeah. quite a good starter if you want to like. You feed them and give them. He's very. Oh my god! What do you want to go back to me now? Just deciding between. What us. is it? It's who's giving what the most it? love? She do you want to go in the middle. Yeah. So who's giving the most love? know that everyone oh is my loving gosh. him. Oh my gosh. But Hazel and I were having some great chats at lunchtime about how when you're out in the garden, it's just fantastic for bringing down the stress levels. And that's really why you got into gardening for the kind of wellness yes. side of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Because I, I was telling, telling um, Josie earlier that I had a very rare cancer. And it was during that time that I had my first flat with a tiny garden. Mm -hmm. And it was really through gardening because I couldn't read really, I couldn't even watch television. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so just being able to potter in the garden. So just instinctive to like get outside. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think because I've watched my mum do it, because mm -hmm. my mum isn't it like an incredible gardener. So I think I knew that's was was maybe deep down I knew that's where she found her solace because there were four of us. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> I think that's why a lot of a lot of you know people with children do um, yeah, they find their peace in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd watched her do it. So it, it must have kind of floated in my you know my memory bank somewhere yeah. but yeah I was definitely drawn to gardening I definitely was drawn to like oh this is my opportunity to have my own garden mm. um and it was really urban like it was in Warden so it just had like tiny it was all paid and like just a tiny little border lots of pots lots of pots <laughs> and like passion flower and but actually things that I probably look back on now which I would never grow you know what I mean like yeah. your first growing you're like oh my gosh I'd never choose that now but that's yeah so but that's but that's where you learn isn't it Absolutely. I always say you've got to Learn. You can't. Nothing can look like exceptional. It can't look like Peter Shum. And from I the think beginning. that's what's so great about gardening is that you don't have to be an expert. Like yeah. if you do something wrong, all it is is a seed or two. Yeah. That you've, that you've messed up, and you know, a, a few pounds on compost. Yes. So really, you can play and try, and you can get things wrong. And there's so much forgiveness in gardening. This is the thing. And just being outside in nature and away from screens and yeah. all of that. Yes, yeah. it's, it's really so good. good. And it's like, I I have a tendency to be perfectionist, which is bad, I don't advocate <laughs> that. And actually gardening has helped me get rid of that. Mm. Because you can't you be. Can't you be. just, because you could, something could be like, well, this likes a sunny, you know, sunny border and full sun and actually put it, spare, and it doesn't like it. it so you, like it. you have to just keep evolving and trying mm. and, and actually it makes you relaxed and because it's not so prescriptive. No, exactly. You know, so. I think different people have different reasons why it's so good for them. Like mm. Charlie's quite, Tightly well. Yeah. So when he comes into the garden, it's like the, the manual. Are you getting a bit frisky? I think. Pipe down. Um, it, it's just the you know the energy mm. you really put so much into it. Or if you just want to almost treat it like a meditation. Yeah. Like sometimes for me, being in here and sowing seeds, it's yeah. just such a. You don't need to use your brain. No. So you can. But your hands are busy. So that's quite meditative. Yeah. It completely. It's what I say when I um, ever teach with flowers. As you know, mm. it's just like this is we're going to create something beautiful. But what I'm interested in is the thing before you're finished. It's mm. the ju the journey. Yeah. You know, as much as the destination. It really is because anything that. You know, they say anything that puts you into what like, what's pure rest. Pure rest is something that you're doing that you're enjoying, and you just you don't even notice the time or anything like yeah, that. And oh, I think totally. you know, gardening is very restful. Hundred um, percent. I you know many times that like my I love the obviously you must love the summer too for the long days. Yeah. And the amount of days like Andrew's like. <laughs> I know. Well, but having that church down there is actually great because it chimes on the hour. Oh, so I, you I, know. I can I can tell what time it is without yeah. having to check my phone. Yeah. And it is I, I listen to it and I'm like, really? Another hour? Another yeah, hour? Another. Suddenly it's nine PM in the summer and I'm still just tinkering away down yeah. there. And in the garden since nine AM. Like yeah. Twelve hour day in the garden. I know. But isn't that wonderful? I just absolutely love it. I yeah. think when you're in a 
any job that's you know requires just continual mental exhaustion yeah. and just to have the complete opposite outside in the garden yeah yeah, yeah it's awesome. really lovely and the same thing even if you haven't got a garden even if like house plants, like some mm -hmm. people's house plants are like their children you yeah, know it's absolutely. that it's that it's that caregiving yeah you know that's what it is like i literally talked to my plants yeah. like what are you doing today <laughs> and i was just stroking my sweet peas yeah like, oh, I'm like, i need you to push out a little bit now you do they cherish are. them yeah they i think are like growing people. things from seed especially you really are nurturing them from when they're this big. oh gosh yeah it sounds a bit wrong but until you're eating them <laughs> so it is literally like you're caring for this tiny thing and makes you appreciate everything yeah. yeah it's magical yeah it does it does it's just yeah i'm just so glad i found it and you know now it's my job um yeah so what was good. the jump from enjoying time in your garden and doing a garden yes. to doing floral design yeah so actually yeah because when i after i got better i had a vintage clothing business so i didn't go out, go into um flowers immediately mm -hmm. and i just fell out of love with vintage it became mm -hmm. a very different beast it, my business started merging online and i was just mm -hmm. losing that connectivity with people and the mm -hmm. outdoors essentially mm -hmm. And I just, I was applying for jobs and then I was just like, I didn't really, I was applying for jobs and kind of like hoping that I didn't hear. Oh, and yeah. you know, I just never, I didn't know, I wasn't passionate about it. Yeah. And I just was thinking, I was like, I really love flowers, but it just seemed so unobtainable. It just seems so um, academic, like everything's mm -hmm. Latin, there's things mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I did a fashion degree, so actually having vintage clothing business, it felt like I was allowed to be in that space yeah. where it, the horticulture felt very kind of other to me mm -hmm. and quite very scary yeah. but I just kept coming back to flowers so then it was just oh, like nice. I've just got to do it you know <laughs> Sorry, getting a bit excited. do you think that yeah. the the horticulture industry has changed for the better has it opened up or do you think it's still <sighs> I think there's still lots of work to do, mm -hmm. but I think over, especially since like the Black Lives Matter movement, there's mm -hmm. been huge change and awareness yeah. in like how it can be isolating for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so you see, you know, uh, uh, lots of um, companies really trying, lots of charities, mm -hmm. RHS really trying to be, you know, speak to everybody. Yeah. And um, I know we spoke about the Garden Museum before, but places like that where you know everyone can go and there's something it's very inclusive you know mm -hmm. it's for children it's for you know people young kids who don't who live in an urban environment who've never seen yeah. gardens and i think there was a lot of conversation about people feeling actually unwelcome mm -hmm. and people of you know um you know people of color not feeling welcome in a lot of spaces mm -hmm. and a lot of people didn't even realize that you know so uh i think all these conversations are great mm -hmm. uh, but i think there's a lot more Still to do there's a go. lot more to do yeah. uh but i'm just like, thankful that there's awareness about how other people you know feel in certain environments mm -hmm. and certain industries Definitely. and that's changing um yeah. slowly so slowly but surely it is changing mm -hmm. and i guess social media kind of helps that because for anyone that wants to get into the space whether it's a, as a florist or as someone that's just passionate about tinkering in their garden the walls the barriers to entry to put that kind of passion on social media are very low yes. so you would hope that you know social media can obviously be a very unfriendly place mm -hmm. but also i think that anyone can get started yes and anyone can create a page about what they're passionate about whether it be growing vegetables or soil microorganisms or whatever yeah. part of gardening you're into mm -hmm. and people will join you that have got similar interests yeah. so hopefully from that side it's yeah you know i think i yeah, I think I think you're completely right. And the amount of young, young, you're going on the floor. You're just too much, much Mister. It's too much of a romantic mood, and it's spoiling the chat. So you can scuttle off, scuttle off, little, little. Um, oh no, I love him. Um, there is such a community of like young young people who are gardening really yeah. successfully, and they all come together and they all kind of know each other. Yeah, and, that, and that's lovely. And I also mm. think as well that especially in flowers, it's kind of you know a lot of training can be cost prohibitive to a lot of people. But mm. there's some amazing florists who've learned things just completely. Um, oh my god! I'm so I know. Sorry. I know what he's doing. Romantically, <laughs> um, propositioning Hazel's leg. Right, I'm sorry, but this has got to stop. He's loving me a little too, too much. You need to buy her dinner at least five times before that is allowed, Dexy. Please, I'm going to just hold oh him my away. Gosh. My goodness. I was like, oh, he's. So oh, okay. I think I know what he's doing. He did that to um, uh, an accountant that came to visit. Oh. And he shredded the poor man's trouser legs. I had to buy him a moss frost out of trouser. The meeting. You know, it's vigorous and scooby doo Yes. Oh, he was gnawing away at the trousers. Yeah. It's aggressive. Look at his eyes. Oh, He's like, I've got, a, I've got a plan. I've got a, a love interest and I'm going to get oh it. Oh my god.
I must apologize. <laughs> Awful <laughs> behavior from my child. Oh my gosh. Mm. But, um, oh, yeah, it's um, definitely a long way to go, but I think yes. I think the space is becoming more accessible overall, yes. isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And I think that, as you say, through like social media and like YouTube and Instagram, and people just sharing mm. their their process and showing what they're doing, and also yeah. teaching. Like you can mm. learn so much. Uh, I'm always so. I'm just not a snob about how people educate themselves at no, all. Um, and yeah, I think it's amazing that somebody can like you know really learn. Like you can learn so much that I was taught mm -hmm. on, a, on, on YouTube, you know, That's so much. That's the thing, everyone wants to share like their little tips, their little yeah. hacks, and now nothing is a secret. It's, yeah. All, yeah. it's all online now, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's good, especially for like sustainable floristry, because mm -hmm. we don't use floral foam or anything like that. And yeah. many years ago, it was so secret, like, nobody shared the engineering times their sustainable mm -hmm. um, you know mechanics it's like why yeah, like, why crazy. is that one upmanship we all taught each other and then yeah. we all did it it's so much better for the environment and everything totally. and uh yeah it's even i do that i always you know sometimes when i stuck out and look something and do mm -hmm. create something it's half the time somebody's made the structure and it's on youtube or instagram Absolutely. so yeah it's, it's great so true. what are your top sustainable floristry hacks oh gosh so i was it's, do you know what it's similar to food so it's like seasonality mm -hmm. so yes. i was like just be aware of what's actually in season mm -hmm. um uh, so that's always a good thing to know uh just just for your own education mm -hmm. um and i never say don't buy imported flowers because the imported flower industry serves a lot of families mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. but what i will say is try and um if you or buying cut flowers from like supermarkets there are some lovely varieties but try and seek out the fair trade mm -hmm. ones so mm -hmm. that's what i would do yeah. um and then cut and then for cut flowers it's just be really careful what, what you know make sure you cut them every couple of days yeah cut them at an angle mm -hmm. um we're probably we're coming up into lilac season so things that are woody cut vertically as well as on the angle oh, that really helps with the more. water absorption okay um and just just mindful of like heat sources and mm. and anything that's too cold yeah. and it, if with a little extra care you can really make a vase of flowers last mm. because they're cut so you know we cut them so we want to make sure that they last yeah. a Come long time as yeah as possible. exactly yeah i was sharing a really silly hack um in my last video i always get the chickpeas in the jars oh, yeah. and i love antique pots and yes. often they've got holes in the bottom yes. so i just always keep the food jars and, and then, then put them in. inside the yeah. antique ones and yeah. I always use, this is not a good example because it's coated, but um, chicken wire, yes. I will shove in my wider pots and yeah. use that instead of a foam to, yeah. to keep Yeah, that's, that's exactly if what you've not we got do. A little spike, what are the spiky things called? Frogs. Frogs, oh, yeah. Not a frog. Yeah. Fancy word. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, but yeah, chicken wire, wire chicken exactly. Chips. And the thing is, we use chicken wire in my business all the time. But it, mm. but we just reuse it and reuse it absolutely because it will fit. We've got like loads of vessels, obviously, and then yeah. we've got the chicken wire that's for that vessel. Scrunched and we just into that yeah, vessel. yeah. And that yeah. that trick with the. Um, with the with the glass as well. If you have a vase, say if you go to there's so many amazing brands on the high street that do great homeware, but a lot of the vessels are like actually what? not. It says or it says you can't use it for water. Ah, okay. And like a lot of the time, but then all you do is do the same thing. Yeah. Stick something in. Stick it. something in it and then use it. So yeah, that's a great. Yeah, your hacks are excellent. Yeah. I'm trying to think I've got any more? Looking around. See what are the hacks? Little roll tubes for growing. Any yes. Fruit, fruit. Yeah, that's candy. a great one. And I suppose, I suppose water, like saving, conserving water, yeah, yeah. you know, if you have got a garden, that's mm -hmm. really important. Yeah, I, um, I'm trying to persuade Charlie that a water bath doesn't have to be ugly, because I really think I need one on the corner there. Yes. Because I am just using hose pipe. Yes, well, you know, I did until we kind of sorted out the irrigation, and I was looking for water, but I guess garden trading, there's one that's aluminium. That's okay. on a little stand. I think I know the one you mean. Yeah, yeah. that's like, this, I, I've done the search. <laughs> Oh my god, a very serious garden. It's like, it's just a water butt hazel, does what it needs to do. I'm like, it oh, can't be I want it to look nice. Exactly, don't spend all this time like making your greenhouse yeah. aesthetic, don't stick a massive, exactly. big, horrible, plastic y item on the end. Exactly. So, and, so. I, and I think just caring for things um, outside as well. To uh, where I, I have this, I'm not going to say OCD, but this habit of whenever I see on the forecast it's going to be rainy, I yes. will come out and I'm, I don't want to miss out on something blooming. So yes. I always come out and I pick everything when it's going to be raining, enjoy it in the house. And yeah, just caring, caring for the garden. Yeah. And it, 
cares for your back. It does. It gives you so. But it does. It gives you as. I mean, it is the old saying, isn't it? It's not, you, as much as you put in, you get back, and that really is a thing. And almost to the point. Sometimes I don't know what you're like if it's like high summer, mm -hmm. and say like your roses are coming out, or and I'm like, oh, I've got to go away for four days. I'm like, no, I'm gonna miss. I know. Exactly. <laughs> like that's happened so many times. Yeah. You've been waiting for this one particular yeah. flower, and then ah, oh, you you are away. Yeah. It comes. It's always tomatoes for me. Oh, I always miss my tomatoes. You miss your tomatoes. Yeah. So that's, I, honestly, it gets me every time. Or tulips, something that's oh. so a singular flower like that that you do yeah. really painstakingly wait for, and mm. then you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I need like we need like a flower cam. You know, we'll yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> a webcam on the flower yeah. so when you're feeling a bit sad. Exactly. Like, oh, what is the board doing? doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder if anyone would watch a YouTube channel that was just like filming a flower. I mean, I mean, I mean probably. A bit of ASMR. Exactly. Like, comes exactly. I mean, I would camera. probably drift off to sleep watching yeah. something. <laughs> I know. It's so lovely. Yeah. I love how we said we were going to have a quick five minutes. I know. And now it's. <laughs> 20 minutes later, but this has been our day really, hasn't Oh, it? it's just been such a nice day. It has, yeah. it's been glorious. Yeah, we had a little look around the Soho farmhouse kitchen garden. Yes. I wonder what was going on in the greenhouse, so we didn't really talk, were not yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what was happening there. They always do interesting things. I was trying to work out. I mean, I've gone there before where I've walked into a brand event with loads of people I know. I'm like, oh, oh why? Yeah. I'm NFI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh what's God. this? Um, oh but yeah, I'm sure it's something. <laughs> Like, is she crashing? Yeah, yeah, I know, I did feel a bit like that. I actually got offered wine, I think they thought I was just like, I wasn't actually on the invite list, but if you want me to be, I can be. That's funny. Oh my goodness. Oh, but yeah, it was looking very pretty. It was looking very nice. It was, nice. it was looking good. Yeah. And let's finish with your favourite garden memory. Oh gosh. Do you know what? It's probably like, because I've got three siblings, mm -hmm. so it was probably paying, nothing to do gardening, but it's like, feel free to kick him off. <laughs> He is my little Stacy, I'd like to hear about the story with the sisters, please, without frivolity oh in the background. Gosh. Shut there, I've crossed my legs there, so we're gonna move. Yes, I've got a brother and two sisters, and actually uh, playing bat and ball. Do you, I mean, you can yeah. still get it. It's just a really basic children's game. I think it's just a saviour for parents because literally yeah. you can play it by yourself. Keep them occupied. Exactly. But I just got so many memories of like playing in the garden with my siblings, mm. and you know those long. I love dusk. Yeah. I love like when you've been out out for so long and then like it's just getting dark mm. and I love that time of day. It just really reminds me of my childhood. That's and so lovely. Yeah. So I suppose it's action of a busy day. Yeah. In the time. Yeah. So I think my garden memories always involve people or maybe gardens I've visited with somebody or Yeah. 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 How about That's you? Lovely. Um, obviously our wedding, yes. I think um, on the next day, we had the children come the next day and so many of them, the little ones, like going up to different things in the border and like mm -hmm. smelling all the flowers. But then also mum and I now have quite a nice tradition where every Mother's Day we do our snowdrop splitting. Oh. So we go out and we find the clumps of snowdrops and we split them and it's just time mm -hmm. together so outside. Nice. So that's a nice, a nice memory. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just a happy, happy place. Oh, it's so yeah. lovely. Well, it's, it's, it's lovely. got such a like gorgeous vibe, and it's just like mm. oh, a little piece of heaven. It's so Thank beautiful. You. Yeah. So we have to come back in the summer. I see yeah, it can't wait. Glorious. Yes. It's a bit brown at the moment. <gasps> well, I, I see. I honestly see. I was saying before. I, I see beauty in every season. Yeah. You know. So, but um, yeah, I'd love to see it in fall again. Well, you have to be back. Yeah. Well, thanks for having a little chat. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Loved it. Okay, well, we're going to finish our tea inside. Yes. So we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> that was lovely. Well, I, lo I love that five minute, twenty two minute I know, chat. I know. <laughs> Look at He's like, this. if I just do this for long enough, they'll come. Oh, Dexter. It's Dexter, you so are hilarious. Rude. It's so Good morning, my darlings. It's now Saturday morning. I cannot even begin to tell you what a gorgeous day I had yesterday with Hazel. You know when you meet someone and you just click so strongly because you're so similar in so many of the things that you believe in and that you're passionate about and I just adore her. I just absolutely adore her. We had, we could have chatted for weeks, <laughs> weeks on end. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed our, our little, well, not so little, chat in the greenhouse. That was the vibe the whole day, just nattering about things that we love and it was really, really special. 
Um, I'm going to leave Hazel's Instagram down below and she's also going to be appearing on your television again very very soon. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say what it is but if you're into your gardening you will definitely be seeing her on your TV very soon. Very very excited for her and um, I may or may not have been very heavily persuading her to pop what she does on YouTube. I just think that everything that she does from creating floral displays for massive brands to running charity projects to get people that um, wouldn't necessarily have access to a garden otherwise to give them access to gardening and the benefits that it provides. She has just got such a well-rounded career and she does so many amazing things and personally I want to watch more of it. I want to see the behind the scenes of her getting ready to film these amazing things for television or creating these incredible displays so hopefully we'll have some weekly vlogs from Hazel coming soon um, but for now I'll leave her Instagram down below. So today it's Saturday we've got um, Phil and Hannah's children <laughs> coming over for dinner tonight so that Phil and Hannah can have a date night and also Scarlett so we're gonna be I think either fajitas or pizzas is what we're gonna do but for now we're heading to the gym um, with giving Phil and Hannah um, guest passes so they can join us. So I think we're going to do an hour in the gym, then Hannah and I are going to do a reforma pilates. Probably just going to stretch in the gym. It is Saturday after all. And I have got, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you, <laughs> a new gym look from Vali. They actually really kindly sent me some pieces. I wasn't going to say no. So exciting. So this is a gorgeous, um, jumper that is perfect for yoga, more relaxed exercises, but also just getting yourself to the gym. It's a really beautiful, it's a gorgeous material that feels quite light and breathable. You know I'm obsessed with their hardware, the gold zip. Um, you can, of course, wear it up, zip it all the way up if you get really cold, um, but I quite like to have it open, a bit more airy. These leggings, I've had Vali leggings before, and I swear, maybe I just got a different kind because these feel so much more <laughs> like sucking you in and sculpting you. Um, they feel quite like, they're quite tight um, and sculpting in the best way. <clears throat> it's probably just a different kind, but they're also the perfect ones for if you're the kind of person that wears leggings all day at home <laughs> to do your errands, then um, these are perfect. I also have really fun bag it's like a Sherpa shearling on the outside it's actually reversible but I quite like having the shearling so I'm gonna pop all of my little gym bits in here previously I had everything in this which is I think this was from Etsy so I'm just gonna move everything into my new snazzy barley bag and then I've got a few little bits and bobs here too you might be able to see behind me a bit, bit messy um, but I've got another knit over there. Thank you, Bali. I'm a huge customer of Bali already, so the fact that they've so kindly sent some bits over is so generous. These socks, I'm going to wear them right now. They feel like heaven. They are so soft um, and perfect for reformer Pilates. Sometimes. Sometimes I have to take my socks off if you need something that requires foot grip. But a lot of the time you can get away with just wearing socks. Oh my gosh, they're so soft. I'm going to feel so jazzy turning up in my full Vali outfit today. I like how sporty they are with that, like, stripe on them. Really, really fun. We also have this hat, this little beanie, which feels so warm and cosy. I don't think I need it today, warmth-wise. Socks we've got in this pink colour as well, so cute, and in green because it's me, um, and we've got like a thicker knitted, these feel like welly socks, and what else did we have, we've got leggings in green, this beautiful olive colour, I think these might be a different kind, these are the Let's Move high pocket 25 inch compression fabric, shape sculpting with a luxe matte finish, they are recycled, four way stretch, and moisture wicking, which is perfect, especially on a day like today when we're doing stretching, gym, reformer, and then brunch. And I'm not going to be getting changed before brunch, so sweat wicking is great because it literally means that the fabric, it absorbs the sweat and then wicks it away from your skin, which is amazing. What time is it? Okay, 8.17. 
Charlie wants to leave at 20 past, so let's get going. We've bought the children and Auntie Scarlet to Quince and Clover, but Dexter's decided to apply the sausage dog brakes. I'm not to keep Daddy, you're going to have to carry me. Daddy, please carry me. Okay, it's a few hours later. We had a fantastic double workout at the club and then a lovely brunch and now we have got Scarlet with us. We've headed out to Great Chew, got some coffees, we've had some cake in over. Now we're just taking the boys for a quick walk. We've got to head out to find some food for tonight, feeding the boys and Bee. Um, and I need some compost, <laughs> so that's the mission for the afternoon. But we're just stretching our legs a little bit, and then we'll head back to the house with the fire on and have a nice cozy afternoon. got a very anxious sausage dog because Charlie's gone to get some fajita wraps so we're playing calming music for dogs and we're doing some breathing exercises while I massage Dexie's head. <laughs> Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Hold for one. As you exhale, feel the rib cage relax. <laughs> Breathing in for four. Feel the belly rise. Breathing out for four. No, it's okay. Why is it working? It really is. Ladies come to sleep. <laughs> it's working on Polele. Close down the eyes. You are warm. You are comfortable. Oh, you've got bad breath. Well, it's been a little while since we've been to Station Mill, but we're going to see what antique delights we can find in here. <laughs> Always so many treasures in here, everything from old plant pots to bejazzled Moet bottles. <laughs> That's nice. Dead, dead chicken and dead fish. Could have worked at Strawtop, couldn't it? It's a bit big, maybe. It's very nice though. Scarlet, I reckon you should have well, these for your house for Jaeger bombs. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite cool, Slightly. aren't they? Yeah. I might get this to be fair. <laughs> So Scarlett just asked what these were, and back in the days pre-electricity, they would prop these up next to the fire until it got super hot, and that's how you would iron your clothes in the olden that's days. Amazing. Could use it as a weight now for like a bar workout, couldn't you? That's quite cool. Do like a squat with the. <laughs> Come on, let's do some lunges. Okay. That's... <laughs> yeah, kettlebells. Yeah, they are like kettlebells. kettlebells right? Quite handy actually. Are you serious? <laughs> Interesting. Not being funny, right? <laughs> Given that you live in East London. 
pleasure doing business with you. And just quickly, given you're a bit trendy in East London, that's actually, I could see that in an East London flat. Or the one behind. Oh, you mean oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we love this. I think Do we Matt need another one something. from um, for straw top dying? Straw top two. <laughs> so we're playing a game. You got to so pick this, something this, up. This Tell us what it is. <laughs> Wrong so answers only. The when they saw a fly, they sort of make a game of it. <laughs> or it is an a antique really, paddle. Really intense toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> You're a twonk. Oh dear. <laughs> We found an antique brown sauce sachet. <laughs> How on earth has this found its way here? I don't know. What it's is this? Goat, Wrong answers only. <laughs> um, yeah, I know exactly what that is. Oh no. What? A toilet plunger. No, 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 no. It's, um, it's fit. Do you know when you bash garlic? <laughs> it's a garlic. For giant wild garlic. It's a garlic crusher. <laughs> what is it? Um, no. Uh, what they actually used to use this for is you know when you um, put like a stamp on a letter? You have to... <laughs> yeah? No, what is it? It is an old Welsh wooden masher. Potato masher, sorry, ah. sure, isn't it? Yeah, garlic press. Fair enough. Nice. Yeah. Tell us what it is. No, it's, it, well, it's an old money bank you put your pound coins in. <laughs> no, do you know what it is? Seriously? It's for eggs. No, it's, it's eggs, yeah, it's, really? an, it's an excellent thing. Wow, it? that's it's cool. an excellent yeah, it's suggestion. Eggs. It's a <laughs> large egg rack. Get that yeah, for Jack. Know, it really, you'd need that in a bakery or something. Mmm. Or a chicken farm. That's a stupid egg. Yeah. P L J. J O P. Used to use this. What is this? Just quickly, before you do it, this used to be used in the House of Parliament, Parliament <laughs> for keeping the politicians in check. <laughs> I'm not going to put that online. It, it was actually originally, that's why the whip is called the whip. Yeah, I did that. Oh, I genuinely, <laughs> I thought this was that musical instrument that you wing it no, round and round. No, 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 no. What this, is it? This is a toothbrush cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is it? No, it's got to be something to do with shoes, isn't it? I don't know. A pair oh, look. of shoe stretchers. Shoe stretchers. Shoe stretchers. Yeah. Homegrown vegetables. Inspiration and practical advice for would-be smallholders. That's lovely. A hotbed. Green manure. Wow, this is cool. This is this. genuinely quite fascinating. Mm. An antique French patisserie heart mould. That's quite cute for little cookies. Sweet. Okay, what's yeah. this, Charlie? Tell us again what you just said. Well, it's, it's for putting like, um, you put like air, you know, a Wix air freshener. You just stick that in there. Waft it around. Scarlet, do you know what it is, genuinely? No, it's, it's for chestnuts, isn't it? No! Is it not for roasting chestnuts? No, you, no, that. no. Genuinely, you would put hot coals in it and then you would put that in your bed. And you wow. would warm up your bed with it. Health yeah. and safety nightmare. Yeah. Again, we used to have one in my old house. We used to use it. Yeah. Oh, look. I love these old enamel signs. These are quite good. Uh oh. You've got to do it, Scarlett. In all seriousness, these are quite good. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> I need to get a video of you doing that because that's what Alex needs in Pilates. Go on. Go on, do it. Wow, that's actually very effective. What have you got there, darling? Antique dentistry tools. And then these. Oh my god. These actually. These, this was used for trimming nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for doing like brain surgery. And these are antique ski poles. How cool. This is actually quite a cool section. That's quite yeah. a, cool, a lot of cool stuff. Oh, an antique first aid box. Oh no, it's for the Swiss. It's the Swiss it's flag. Money box, I think. Money box. Hmm. If what you saw earlier was a fly swatter, what's this? Yeah, that's <laughs> an antique bum spanker. <laughs> <laughs> they had much larger bottoms back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what is going on there? Oh, it's an old chiropractic example. Be quite good for look. Do you remember in school having these old fashioned yes, rulers? I do. Oh my gosh. I remember the literally teachers being at a chalkboard with. Yeah. <laughs> And this is what 30 centimetres looks like. So retro. Cute. <laughs> what is this? Wrong answers only. Oh, that's a horse toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> or a window wiper. A window wiper. De -fr de -icer for a car. That would genuinely be great for that. Yeah, what actually is it? Boot cleaner, Antique I think. Bristle slip slipping brush. Slipping brush? Yeah, stop your slipping. Oh. <laughs> I always wanted one of these fabric room dividers. 
I would probably replace the actual fabric. Oh, a bunny. <laughs> but it's beautiful. We've got a dressmaker's. What's Charlie it's got now? Air Prado the Formula One race. Yeah, yeah it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, I actually don't know, I'm struggling with this. Let's see. Wow, it's a Conquistador stirrup, apparently. Oh, wow. I'm surprised it's not more expensive. That's a Conquistador stirrup. Can't be very unique, don't I know. For my, feet, my for future boyfriends of Scarlet, because if they upset her, I'll just break in and leave it in their bed, Godfather uh, style. Uh, <laughs>